Bolt 12 is a big, a big thing that we're working on. Um, so this is a standardization effort for kind of the next generation aligning invoices and payment systems. But really what people want is a static QR code that gives them open everything. And they want a whole heap of more uh, privacy and anonymity guarantees. They want it to be extensible. So in future, we can have like recurring payments and, and refund flow and all these things uh, that really, you know, we've, we've discovered from having, you know, a good, a good five years of experience with uh, Bolt 11. So there's all that. Um, and it uses some some really cool new technologies like um, we, we always had onion routing for our payments, but now you can send messages. We always had payer anonymity. So you got the money, you didn't care where it came from, like, you know, uh, which was good, but we never had vendor anonymity. So if you were receiving a payment, you kind of had to be pretty well known. Um, There's a few ways you could kind of tweak it, but really um, you didn't have this strong vendor anonymity. And that's, you know, obviously that's a nice thing to have, but it's particularly important in the refund case, right? So cool, you're all anonymous and everything, and I pay you, and then you go, actually, we're out of widgets. I need to send your money back. Well, now you have to send me money, but without strong anonymity guarantees, I'm like, well, I have to dox myself to get my money back, right? So this is obviously the kind of thing that you discover with practice and something that like Bolt 12 helps with. So um, we've implemented that like quite a while ago as a draft. And more recently, it's been picked up by a couple of other teams, uh, both uh, the Lightning Development Kit team and Eclair have jumped on, oh, yep, we really want to implement Bolt 12. I love it in URL, right? It, it filled this, this huge void that we had between, hey, cool, we've got these invoices, but man, you know, I really want something static. I want something short. I want something, you know, all these things, right? Um, so L and URL came along and, and filled that gap, which is great. But in my mind's eye, I see the Lightning Network I want to use, right? And L and URL requires basically a web request. The encoding is kind of awkward just on a technical level and stuff like that. But I really want something that's Lightning native, right? Built in that everyone supports that does this through the through Lightning network itself. So you don't have to have like a web server somewhere that's doing this redirect and everything else. It can literally, if, if you have a Lightning node, you can have full stack, right? You can do everything. You can have your static codes that everyone supports that goes straight to my phone. And I am a, an equal self-sovereign Lightning participant to anyone else, right? And L and URL, very much when they came up with it was like a, here, here's a here's a stop gap uh here's here's like a here's a whole heap of pieces that we need and we're going to put it in like a web request which is absolutely the right way to do it and ellen url actually has some pretty cool stuff that that office doesn't have like you know channel opening and stuff like that we very much focused on this whole invoicing and and sending and sending money flow you know we've kind of cut cut out that bit and go cool okay we want we want to push this down the stack and have this as standard so ln url is, is, is not going to go away it's still got some really good good use cases but this is for that one part it's like this is kind of like the way we should have done at the beginning but we kind of had to learn right all the mistakes we made in bolt 11 all the things we learned since then have gone into like uh making bolt 12 a reality So for Bolt 12, if I was going to summarize like the, the, the key features for users, it's two, right? It's anonymity on the, on the receiver side. And then a number two, it's, um, it's recurring invoices, right? So you can use, and I think that has implications for Bitcoin price volatility and pricing things in US dollars. Is that, is that right? The real killer thing for users is that the QR codes are a lot smaller, right? So, um, the QR code uh, for a uh, Bolt 11 invoice is starting to get kind of chubby. Um, we we shrink that again dramatically with Bolt 12. Uh, so it's just that, like you get a smaller invoice, right? So it's easier to scan, especially on like you know cheaper phones. Um, so maybe they have crappy displays, maybe they have uh, crappy cameras. I mean, I'm excited about recurring payments because I know vendors really like recurring payments. And the classic trap, of course, for recurring payments with credit cards, they like them for two reasons. One is because they like you know the somewhat reliable income, but secondly, they can make it incredibly difficult to cancel. Whereas in the Bitcoin world, it's all push, right? So your wallet, you know, you just go to your wallet, go, no, stop paying that now. Done, right? There's no negotiation. It's just like, you're always in control. So it's a much more sovereign way to do uh, recurring payments than what we have with technologies like credit cards today. And that that's the right balance. I have no problem with recurring payments. You know, sure, I'm happy to pay my subscription every month. That's great. But I, I want that control. And this this gives you both, which I think is a, I think is really fantastic.